we cannot reach the fleet emission targets regarding CO2 by improving technique on the combustion engine. Many car manufacturers and companies are on a roll at the moment to come up with something sustainable and environmentally friendly. In the same regard, Porsche has emerged with a plot twist that has the potential to shake the very foundation of the electric vehicle industry. So what is that? And how Porsche is going to introduce it to the EV industry? Stay tuned with us as we are about to dive into the latest news from the automotive industry that's been making many people to consider and think about it. So let's get started. Porsche declared two years ago that it would begin producing nearly CO2 neutral synthetic fuel as a ready-to-use substitute for gasoline. Its experimental project in southern Chile's Patagonia region is now projected to produce 130,000 litres of e-fuel per year, increasing to 550 million litres by the end of the decade. Let's clear up some of the lingo surrounding renewable energy. Porsche's e-fuel is made from air and water rather than ethanol or rapeseed oil. What this means is that what the internal combustion engine sees is nearly identical to what it could see if the tank were filled with standard petroleum. The e-fuel is a synthetic hydrocarbon, not alcohol like ethanol, just as in alcoholic beverages. It also has nothing to do with the natural diesel generated from used cooking oil, which became popular a few years ago. The site at Punta Arenas was chosen because it's remote and extremely windy, making it perfect for generating wind power. Porsche believes wind turbines can operate at full capacity for 270 days per year in that location. How does it work? E-fuels do not require any mining or burning of fossil fuels to produce, but instead eliminate CO2 from the atmosphere during production, which is why Porsche refers to its particular brand as a nearly carbon-neutral fuel. Doesn't it make e-fuel really wonderful news for the world? Indeed, for all of us. It's made by splitting the hydrogen from the oxygen in plain old water, or H2O, using an electrolyzer powered entirely by wind, in Porsche's case by a massive Siemens turbine at the southernmost tip of Chile, where the wind blows very hard all the time. We're talking about the Magellan Strait and the notoriously difficult to negotiate Cape Horn. The hydrogen produced by this method is then combined with CO2 taken from the air using a revolutionary new technique known as air capture technology to produce e-methanol. This e-methanol is then sent through a final process created by ExxonMobil dubbed MTG, at the end of which raw 93 octane fuel is produced. This can then be boosted to the desired octane rating using finishing additions. During this entire procedure, not a single fossil is set on fire. The generated e-fuel can be utilized in anything from a carbureted Rover V8 automobile to a Porsche Panamera Turbo S to a commercial passenger plane. It has that much versatility in terms of potential applications. Cars emitting less than 100 grams per kilogram are closer to being carbon negative than carbon neutral because the CO2 collected from the atmosphere during manufacturing nearly outweighs the amount of CO2 emitted while it burns. In principle, this makes e-fuel a huge winner. However, there are always exceptions. To begin with, it's extremely expensive right now, owing to the fact that there is none in circulation. The gleaming new factory as you saw in Chile, the first of its sort anywhere in the world, can create only 130,000 litres of e-fuel per year, along with 350 tonnes of e-methanol. So, the theoretical price of $72 to $81 per gallon is a bit ludicrous right now because you can't actually buy any of it so far. However, as with any product, price is always linked to supply and Porsche's involvement with e-fuel is not to make or sell the stuff. It makes and sells cars, not fuel. But to be the charismatic frontman for a technology that, in reality, is being financed and developed by the same energy companies that have trousered billions over the years making conventional fuels. The main monetary stake in the Porsche factory has been put up by a Chilean mining business named Andes Mining Energy, while ExxonMobil provides the most expensive piece of equipment within the factory itself, the MTG system. In some aspects, e-fuel is similar to conventional fuel, but it's been cleaned up and remarketed with a sleek new Porsche badge on the barrel. Regardless of who manufactures it and whose corporations profit the most from it, e-fuel must be accepted as a good thing in general. It would be fantastic if Porsche can persuade the world's legislators to legislate for it, 
rather than against it in the short to medium future. It's also something ready to be used in the future. Because what Porsche is trying to communicate here is that we cannot afford to put off this technology any longer because, like it or not, the internal combustion engine is here to stay for the next 15 to 20 years. And right now, the infrastructure for broad electrification does not exist internationally and will not be practically available for at least another decade, if not more, which means there is a significant time gap that must be bridged if we are to achieve true carbon neutrality by 2050. After all, it's anticipated that well over a billion ICE vehicles will remain on our roads by 2030, requiring fuel to operate, but if they run on e-fuel rather than traditional gasoline, far, far less nasty stuff will wind up in the environment between now and then. And in case you're wondering, the issue isn't what comes out of the tailpipes. The true problem is the process of producing the fuel that powers our automobiles, planes, trucks and ships. The key distinction is that, as previously said, the creation of e-fuel is clean, whereas the production of traditional gasoline is everything. But ultimately, a car running on e-fuel will emit the same amount of CO2 as a vehicle running on traditional gasoline, and it will consume the same quantity of fuel. E-fuel, synth fuels, biomass fuels, name them what you like, they all provide a broadly similar effect, are undoubtedly a significant part of the short to midterm solution. Porsche's main claim to fame with its e-fuel is that it's faster and easier to scale up and generate on a large scale. E-fuel could be a significantly more long-term answer for someone who wants to drive a classic car guilt-free in 20 to 30 years and beyond. If they take off, they could be useful and affordable for the foreseeable future. And perhaps the best news of all is that our legislators may finally be seeing the light. On March 2nd, the UK's Transport Select Committees issued a report strongly advising the government to do everything possible, as soon as possible, to accelerate the mass production and use of e-fuel in the automotive and aviation industries, as well as to take a close look at how e-fuels can be used in haulage and shipping. It's not a watershed event, but it demonstrates that our decision makers are at least paying attention to experts. One of Porsche's key advantages for the technology is that it will allow vehicle fans to indulge in their passion guilt-free. Automotive marketers have tarnished the image of the gasoline engine in order to promote hybrid and electric vehicles. The shift in attitude has encouraged more drivers to purchase EVs, allowing their average fleet CO2 output to remain below the threshold needed to avoid government emissions charges. And we understand why. Manufacturers will be compelled to pass on the high CO2 taxes imposed by existing legislation to customers in the form of higher retail pricing, forcing buyers to abandon their vehicles. But if e-fuel takes off, drivers will no longer need to trade in their gasoline and diesel vehicles for EVs. Electric vehicles are costly to purchase due to the rare earth minerals utilized in their electric motors and battery packs. This makes it more difficult for low-income people to reduce their carbon footprint from driving. However, e-fuels would allow an old Ford Fiesta to be as environmentally friendly as a brand new Tesla, provided the fuel was made entirely of renewable energy. Ultimately, Porsche's engagement with e-fuel is about waking up governments and the global industry, listening and hopefully doing the right thing now before it's too late. Could e-fuel save the planet? No, not on its own. But it's an excellent place to start because we're nearly out of options. But what are your thoughts on it though? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed watching this video, then please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.